Welcome to Beyond the Build, a new series from Shopify where we share stories behind the Shopify ecosystem, a platform where founders, developers, and innovators come to build for more than 1.7 million merchants worldwide. And today we have Tomer Tagrid, the co-founder and CEO of Yachtfo. Yachtfo is an e-commerce marketing platform with advanced solutions for customer reviews, visual marketing, loyalty, referrals, and SMS. In 10 years, Yapo has grown to over 450 employees, over 30,000 customers, over 500 partner alliances worldwide, and they just recently raised $200 million in funding valued at over $1.4 billion. Welcome, Tomer. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Super excited, Fatima. Thank you for having me. Of course. So pumped for you to be here. And congratulations. I know this is fresh, literally yesterday from the day we're filming, right? Yes. Is when you when you announced the round. Yes, yes. We we closed it yesterday, which is a very exciting. Actually, the entire company doesn't know. They will know on uh, March 17th, which is like a few, like two weeks from today. So yeah, it's it's very, very exciting and very, very humbled. Uh, before we get into it, I'm going to start this a little differently only because I you said something to me right before this that... Um, Yes, we're one. We're at one point four billion dollar valuation, but we're not a unicorn. We're a flamingo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what yeah. is What does that mean? Yeah. So in the in the fundraising uh, process, I had a slide when talking about the Yotpo culture, and in the slide is basically said like be a flamingo in a flock of uh, pigeons. That the idea is that despite the valuation, Yotpo is uh, is a flamingo. It's not a unicorn. Meaning we are like a real animal. We are a real business to provide like real value to customers over time. And I think it's very, very important um, to remember that internally. So that's something I'm talking a lot about with employees that uh, the day that we think that we are a success or the days that we fall in love with worlds like unicorn is a very problematic day. And another thing, it's like a great <laughs> joke and and we like to use sense of humor. So it was also like a spin-off on the entire uh, unicorn thing. Oh, I love it. Um, okay, well, you know, this is obviously a great moment, great milestone for you all, but take me back to the beginning. Like how did Yacht Post start? Where were you personally? And how did you come up with this idea? Yeah, of course. So first of all, uh, we co-founded Yotpo Omri Cohen. He's the smarter half. And myself, both of us uh, met at Tel Aviv University. We finished a combined degree of electrical engineering and computer science. And the reason we founded Yotpo is because one of my friends from back home uh, made fun of us that we didn't buy him anything for his birthday. And... Then we decided one year to do something. It was actually like 11 years ago. Uh, and because I'm the geek, I did the research online to find him like a fancy camera. He was big on photography back then. And we bought him a photography course. And what happened is that the teacher, after the second lesson, told him that we bought him the crappiest camera that we could have bought him. And all of my friends made fun of me. So I went back and I saw that um, my decision was based on reviewers name uh, Fatima123. People that you don't know anything about them are the real, they, they're not real. And then we decided, okay, let's solve authenticity with uh, reviews and let's create trust uh, on that. Uh, and in that process, we started on like, you know, interviewing a lot of like Amazon top reviewers and we interviewed a lot of like businesses, but we didn't know how to get to like merchants. Um, and that's maybe like uh, one of the, the great uh, I know the great things about Shopify for us was we were two engineers out of Israel, didn't know anything about marketing, didn't know anything about biz dev, didn't know anything about sales. And Shopify literally had like the best APIs. So we built just like integrations to Shopify. I actually, it's funny, you know, I, I am... Um, and before the podcast, I was looking for emails that I had. I think it was like 2012. I, I was emailing and, you know, I have like crazy emails with Harley, like like Harley is a regular person and uh, he's answering me on like regular stuff on the App Store. And we were like talking about how do we like really tactical things. And we launched an app on Shopify and that's how we got our first customers because of Shopify's APIs. You had like really good doc documentation back in the days. Harley, uh, Harley will still respond if anyone, if anyone emails him, fair, he's, he's fair, really, yeah. he's really great like that. Um, fair. so yeah, so, okay. So when you launched on the app store, so you, you had the product idea though, because you saw it from a customer perspective, you were saying, right? Like, yes. um, you were kind of shopping on Amazon and realized that, that this was needed. Um, so was it, is it the first iteration of the product that ended up taking off or? No, we actually started by. We said, okay, let's build like a search engine to rank all of the reviews in the world. 
And so we actually went, built like scrapers and we had an algorithm to ranking and we invested a lot in that. And then we understood that the number one problem that we have is how do you verify that that person actually bought the product? We could verify that she or he are like a real person. You would connect your social profiles and we'd build a rank. But how do I know that you that you actually bought that specific product? And, and then we said, okay, the only way to do that is actually to connecting to the business side and, and, and actually closing the loop and generating the reviews ourselves. And, and then that was the iteration that I don't know if to, to call it to take off another like good story. We, so we launched it on Shopify. We started getting like uh, merchants use that. I think we had like a hundred merchant and nothing happens. Like <clears throat> not, not a single review. Literally, we had a bunch of widgets. We saw traffic on site, but nothing happened. And then we had one customer, Ryan, and the store name was the Loop Loft on Shopify. He sold his business since then, but I think the Loop Loft is still live. Uh, and he started generating like 20 reviews a week. And we were like, what the hell is going on there? We pick up the phone, we called Ryan. We're telling like, Ryan, hey, can you share what are you doing? It's working really, really great. And he said, after someone buys something, we send them an email asking them and redirecting them to your widget and asking them to write a review. And then the entire notion of like post-purchase email, and that was our epiphany. So we did that and we, we built another technology called email review that basically you can give the review inside the email that you don't need to leave the email to give the review. And that's where it really took off. And we saw like a lot of like usage, a lot of traction. And that, by the way, when we raised money, it Ryan, after we told him that based on his 20 reviews and his idea that we were able to raise like $1.5 million, that was what gave us like uh, basically the, the runway to build what we built. That's awesome. And when, when was this, like what time frame are we at when you are like, okay, we're going to, we're going to raise this 1.5 million. We have a strong idea of where we're going. I think it was like 2013 probably, uh, where it so happened early. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Really, really so early. What was that? What was that experience like? Because I think raising, raising in the commerce realm at that time versus now are two completely yeah. different worlds, right? So first of all, it was, I hate raising money in general, but it definitely was a nightmare. It was a nightmare because we, we weren't like, we didn't understand a lot of the things that's going to happen on one hand, but we knew that we want to build the software for SMBs. Like we knew that, you know, I remember someone, one of the investors, I remember that meeting telling me like, why are you not selling into Best Buy? Or why are you not selling into Macy's? And, and we knew that we had like, you know, how can I even get to Best Buy to selling them? But we knew that we saw there was a lot of like merchants uh, happening and we thought, look, there's like a new thing. Yeah, they're still small, uh, but that's going to be a thing. Like everyone is going to, or not everyone, but a lot of people are going to sell online. Like it's going to happen. And I remember a lot of investors told like, you have a small TAM, you have a small TAM. Look at like, I remember they gave us like, look at like, um, what was the name that sold to like uh, eBay? Like, GSI Commerce, look at like how much GSI Commerce was sold for and how much Magento was sold for. And look how small is Shopify enterprise. It's the only way to go. Uh, and for the, for the next like five, seven years, uh, I think until like Shopify's IPO, even when Shopify was pre IPO and there was like a big deal already, people told us like, no, SMB in e-commerce, it's such a small market. Like you, you cannot pass the $10 million revenue ever in your life, no matter what you're going to do. Totally. Um, I think like Toby tells this story a lot too. And when he, when he sort of talks about his early journey, because it was like, that was the mental model of like, Oh, how many, how many small businesses are there in the world? And like, that's your max market. Cause you're trying to get them online. But what they didn't see was like, by building this business, we're creating more entrepreneurs and we're increasing the size of the TAM like on a daily basis. Right. And, uh, and that's what you obviously saw at the beginning too, that this isn't, yeah, so it's when not you just tell like, the story, the, I also, I also heard that uh, Toby telling that story on a few podcasts. I heard that we were internally, we were joking that we are sure that Toby is like, because he's Toby, right? Like he was much more strategic. He was much more thoughtful. He would probably knew how to navigate the situation. But for us, it was like extremely frustrating. I remember like me and Omri, like really trying to rethink our decks 
and rethink our story and tell investors that one day we might go enterprise and yada, yada, yada. But like we couldn't convince a lot of people that, you know what, this is actually going to become a thing. And, and it, it almost, I, honestly, I still sometimes hear it where people assume like the only way you're really going to scale is if you go up market. So like who are your plus merchants or whatever? And the, the truth is, is like, if you're, if you're thinking like that, you're still kind of missing the point, right? Because there's so many um, businesses that are helping like the SMBs and like everyone is moving towards supporting local and, and we want to see these small businesses thrive. And there's so much opportunity to serve those customers and create a super successful business while you're doing it. Yeah. So two interesting stories on that one, actually like I think it was a year ago, I was interviewing an independent board member uh, for Yotpo a year, year and a half ago. And, you know, in the process, we're meeting a few times and we're talking and I'm talking about the strategy. And uh, we always have a sentence that also in fundraising that we say that we think that Victoria's Secret will die by a thousand cuts, a thousand mini brands that are like, that's the future of e-commerce. And she was nodding her head. And then eventually she told me, yeah, but like, when are you going enterprise? Like, show me your enterprise team. Like enterprise is the future. And, and we were actually going into battle on that, like on two meetings. And then I told her like, look, I, I don't think like this is going to work. Like she literally couldn't grasp the, the strategy of, you know what? Yes, we might have some enterprise, but no, actually Yotpo is an SMB company. Uh, so I think a lot of people till today are, uh, you know, yeah, they believe it in theory and they can say, you know what, it can happen only for Shopify, but it's very hard to take it like another notch uh, as well. The second thing is I can tell you, which, you know, today Yotpo has like tons of enterprise brands from like Ikea to PNG, Steve Madden. But even if you talk to the e-commerce teams in these big enterprises, they want the, the, the easy to use experience, like they are nimble teams. They are small teams, like they don't have a lot of budget. They don't have like a lot of people. Uh, so I think regardless in e-commerce, eventually, like uh, I, I think Lauren, right? Uh, Lauren was, uh, we did our first conference uh, for uh, for our customers uh, two years ago and we brought Lauren, the, the GM then of Plus, and now I think it's like the GM of Revenue to speak. And yeah. he said like something that really resonates with me, resonated with me, he said like, there's no more enterprise. And I think in e-commerce, it's it's really, really true. Like the, like the world enterprise needs to move from the world. Uh, it's not a good, it's not a good world for uh, e-commerce at least. For, for those of, for those of you who don't know, uh, Lauren Paddleford, yes, he, he actually started uh, Shopify plus at Shopify and grew and grew that business. Um, and totally like, I mean, you hear it in, in everything, you know, arm of the rebels and all the sort of stuff that we talk about, but to your point, the core of it is everyone is going to want simplified turnkey solutions. Like exactly. no one wants like clunky, hard to use, hard to upgrade software where like, you know, like one change means you're changing your whole system. Right. Um, exactly. And so anything that is still using that is likely going to, to move to this eventually where it is really like simplified turnkey software solutions. Right. Exactly. Exactly that. Um, so Tomer, if, if you don't mind, like, I, I mean, you and I know each other personally for a little while now, um, you've had this incredible journey with Yotpo, uh, and I know through the way you had, um, you had some trying times personally, um, with your health, with your health and recently have just overcome. Um, and I wanted to just ask about, about that and how that has, um, if at all sort of changed your mental model when you when you think about the business and, and just life in general? Yes, yeah, so first of all, uh, thank you. And uh, yes, yeah, so I, I'm still, uh, it's funny, I, I thought about it before, like I'm still, uh, I, I call it recovering. Uh, I cannot consider myself as like fully healthy. So for, for the audience to know, like two years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, advanced lymphoma cancer. Uh, thank God I've been through like chemo through hell and back. Uh, and now I'm like, uh, I'm still waiting for my scans, but I, I'm getting better. Let's call it that. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not uh, completely healthy yet, but definitely getting better. Uh, there's one huge advantage, I think, about something so, uh, so powerful. Like it, it really crystallized what's important and what's not important in life in a very black and white. There's no colors in between. Like it's a, it makes everything to be very, very, very precise. And for me, yeah, you know, with like 
enjoy the people that you work with, uh, literally make Yotpo like a platform for good for the world. So one of the things that I'm like really, really pushing that Yotpo is gonna join and we are uh, in the next few months is the pledge 1%. I don't know if you know what, what's that, but like donating like a pres- 1% of our equity um, to like, different organization that we are connected to. And a lot of it, by the way, is organization of like SMB and arming the rebels, uh, by the way. It's like something that we also are big, big believers in. So um, definitely like the the personal journey on one hand is like not taking ourselves too seriously on one hand, because eventually like no one is going to die here. No one is a doctor or brain surgeon or whatsoever. Uh, And second is like, you know, to really take the time to do like, Good. There is a and and I and actually I I I listened to a podcast with Toby about like stoicism, so I highly recommend. I I went I got into stoicism as well because of it. That really helped to shape my uh, point of view on how you know how to deal with difficult times, how to be happy with what you have in life, because uh, there's never enough. Like I can tell you, yesterday when we finalized the round. Uh, Like it's such a huge moment. Like whoever thought that we'll ever raise so much money at like a $1.4 billion, like who even think about it, right? And and in the same day, we lost a candidate, which I really was trying to get and we weren't able to get her. And I was bummed. And my wife asked me like, why are you bummed? Like you should be happy. Like like, it's such a big day, right? And I I was trying to... to unlock my emotions, but I always reminded myself like to to enjoy what we have in life because it's uh, it's not taking for granted. For real, it's not taking for granted. It's also um, a real, uh, I think, privilege when you're in a position where the thing you're doing every day is creating impact. Um, because you know, obviously, we're all here for a limited amount of time, and you want to have the most impact on the world that you can. Um, and when that's tied to the thing that, you know, that you're doing every day, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really special. It's so my, it it's like- my biggest gift in life that, uh, very early, early age, I found what I love, what I'm passionate about that can give like a lot of impact to a lot of people, you know, from merchants to partners, to employees. It's like the biggest gift I got in life. Has, has, um, uh, since you, since you've been back and like, so, so happy to hear about how, um, you've been, you've been getting better and the improvement in your health. Um, do you feel like the company's culture has changed a little bit too, as a result of, yeah, it's interesting. It's definitely so on two folds, I'll answer yes and no. So yes, because the culture must evolve. Like we are now almost 500 people and growing. So I think like you have to evolve the culture in order to sustain the growth. So in general, I think culture evolved maybe because, but not just because of my situation. And I think the second thing is like, you know, so many people stepped up. I remember when, when COVID started, I was actually just coming back. So like, it was like, like really like one, like I, my joke was that I, I my joke with my wife is that I wasn't even able to go to like, uh, to, to take a haircut because when the hair grew back, COVID started and we started the lockdown. So like my wife was my, uh, my barber basically yeah. for the last two years. Um, so if my hair doesn't look that good uh, you can blame her. Um, but, uh, I think so many people stepped up. So when COVID started, I remember I was telling my board that, you know, we didn't know that we didn't know yet that it was good for e-commerce and mm-hmm. everyone was like scared and we- It was still the we, unknown, yeah. Exactly. And we went to raise money and we we decided to let go a few people and it was like a huge thing. But I remember like I had so confident that, yeah, of course we'll like, we'll win. We've been through hell and one already last year. So when uh, 2020 started, I knew that we're going to come out like super strong. And there was a huge conviction uh, that Yotpo is going to come out like stronger from that. So I think on like resilient, uh, our culture was really put into tests. And that was maybe like the, the thing that a lot of people were like super proud of. I think, you know, last time you and I chatted, we spent a lot of time talking about ambition. And, um, I'd love to, to talk about with that with you, because I remember, you know, you told the story that I really want you to share with everyone where Yapo is going really well. You're seeing the growth. Um, you get into this room and you start, you start looking at your, your strategy for the next couple of years and you realize in two yes. years, you're going to hit a wall. What, what happened there? I'll share a little bit. So, 
It was like probably five years ago and we raised a bunch of money. I think we were doing like $8 million ARR or something of the sort, growing 137% at that point, by the way. So everything seems great. And we brought our VP strategy. Now, by the way, he's our CFO, Ophir. So I'll give the credit to him. He was leading like a strategy session and that session yielded like two very concrete outcomes. On one hand, without a doubt, 100% probability, Yotpo will get to $50 million ARR. Maybe it will be like a year, more than a year, like a year more, a year less, but we'll get to that. And we will never, never, never reach $100 million ARR. Why? Because back in the day, we were just a reviews company. And we found out that A, the TAM is not big enough. And second, and be, because we are big believing in the low end of the market, we started to have like a lot of competitors that were building, let's say, 50% of the products for 20% of the price. And we understood that it's going to be very hard to create like a long-term moat and to really build a big company. And I remember I was going to different people. I went to like Adam, he's on our board from Bessemer, and I went to Jeremy Levine, that's actually also on the board of Shopify. And I told them like, we, we like, I'm screwed. Like have a lot of money, great company, but I have a small time. I'm going to hit a wall in two years. Like I know that. And they gave me like a very hard time. Told me like, what do you mean you have a small time? You, you like, we invested in Shopify. Like e-commerce is big. Think bigger, think better. Yeah. And we actually went and talked with a lot of our customers, a lot on like the smaller scale, a lot of like the bigger scale. Like I remember back then it was like the Away and Chubbies and all of those brands. And we understood that like the bigger problem was actually the fact that in between the categories, there's a problem. Like every brand is trying to win over consumer attention. So they're trying to build like a great consumer experience, but they can't because they need to connect their loyalty platform to the reviews and their visual marketing suite to their loyalty and the referrals and their SMS. And, and then we said, you know what? Let's consolidate everything. Let's become what we call an e-commerce marketing platform uh, to be, really help brands like make it easier for them to focus on building great experiences. Like think about all of the solution under the same data platform. And it was a great vision. Like you see the numbers, huge TAM, everyone internally got excited, but it was a nightmare of an execution because we needed on one hand to invest in the platform. And like for the last five years, I hope like the people that are familiar with Yotpo, you're going to start seeing this year and next year, like huge progress in the platform itself. Like as it means you need to make like to completely re-architecture uh, the platform. Second is you need to go and build more products. And we talk about like Yotpo's M&A strategy in a second. So we build two more products. We acquire two more products. We are now building two more products and looking at another category to acquire. And that takes a lot. And in parallel, you have like, you know, low end, high end, how you juggle all of that. And a lot of people told us like, now you're trying to build like four companies in one company. You don't have a chance. And I remember like there were a few meetings that internally that we understood, like, you know, in the beginning you get excited and then you're going to start up talking about, okay, what it takes to build that. And people started getting scared because... It, it became very clear that we need, you know, to rethink our go-to-market engine. We need to rethink our architecture. Like for the last four years, we made like a huge change in our architecture. And, and that we like, we understood that, you know what? Part of the Oppo mentality is like, go big or go home. So even if we'll fail, let's at least failing trying to build something really, really big. Uh, and I think that that was the consensus around the room. And that's what get us like a lot of the, the confident that, you know what? we can actually make it happen. And so we went and did like, I think we are the first company to acquire a company in the Shopify ecosystem. And I remember that was like a big deal. And even till today, it's funny. And I hear people like, I'm not clear about like why some products we build, one some products we buy. So maybe to explain that, we took a very conscious decision to let's focus our engineers first on the platform and to re-architecture because that, takes like a lot of like a lot of effort. Second is that we understood that we don't understand anything about loyalty. And loyalty is a very complex, I can tell you now, like we acquired Swell three years ago. It's a very complex problem, loyalty, to really help brands like solve their, I don't know, most important relationship with their most important customers. And Josh and Jim had like, they were like an amazing team to join us. And, and I think till today, by the way, Josh leads our product marketing and strategy. He's like been such a force forward for the company. And so 
that was like a huge, huge change mindset for Yotmo. And then we were very focused on that. And I think the first thing that we showed brand, you know what, it is feasible. We we launched another product called VMS. It's like a visual marketing suite. Think about it like the I don't know, shoppable Instagram. Think about it that you can use your visual experiences and that's been very very successful for Yotpo. so i think we completely changed like i think a lot of our reviews competitors even on the low end build that as well and we show the world that you know what you can consolidate categories and then we just push our boundaries and say okay let's quicker quicker and faster consolidate more and more categories because the platform is getting stronger because it's always about how do you provide a consistent experience for merchants and um, so definitely that was like a huge huge change. i think up until the point that we were like a reviews company and changing from reviews to an e-commerce marketing platform was a huge change in Yotpo. We didn't understand the the magnitude of the change because I don't think without it, we would have never become like what's hopefully going to be like the first public company on top of the or inside the Shopify ecosystem, right? But I, I think that's uh, that's the only way to really build like a long lasting company is to really evolve. And that was our biggest evolving moment. That's awesome. Yeah, you were definitely uh, the, the first company to acquire others in the ecosystem. Um, I, I think like you, you definitely have a notable M&A strategy. Like it, it's, uh, it, it shows and it's, it's kind of an amazing thing to even see because it creates more opportunity for the ecosystem itself, right? Like um, there's more exit opportunities. We're seeing founders from some companies invest in others. Um, and it's just like, you know, it's, it's, like the size and exactly. scale of what the ecosystem can do together is just growing, which is, which is pretty phenomenal to see. But I love that. Uh... I can share another story, by the way. Thank you that, uh, you know, I'm talking to with a lot of entrepreneurs and trying to help them on the Shopify ecosystem. And everyone is telling me like, how did you succeed? And I keep telling them like, we were just in the right timing. Like, it's not that we were like great on marketing or we did like a app store optimization we just put the app store it was a great timing we built we were like really engineers and, and when they you know tell me about like fundraising they always talk about an exit strategy that shopify will buy them and, and i always say that you know what maybe that will happen i don't know like what's shopify strategy uh, but it would be like not smart to put your eggs on that because shopify cannot acquire the ecosystem they're actually getting much more value that there is a very live ecosystem and there is like really long lasting companies on top of the Shopify ecosystem. And I think so, so just for entrepreneurs out there, like, I hope that Shopify will acquire you one day. Maybe that that's like a phenomenal thing. Like I think, but just don't count on it. Cause I think it's a, it is actually counterintuitive to the ecosystem, to the magnitude of what you were saying to the magnitude of what's happening here is I actually think it's even bigger now. And uh, uh, which I think is just like amazing to see. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the the biggest the biggest thing is is that there's multiple avenues to succeed, right? Like we've got, um, you know, Shopify build, buys, partners, invests, acquires. Um, at the same time, you know, like you said, there's more and more of that activity happening outside of Shopify. Um, there's also companies in the ecosystem that have no intention of being exactly. these ve massive venture businesses, right? Like they're just like building profitable SaaS companies. Um, they're like doing extremely well, hundred percent self-owned, no intention of, of, um, extremely well. Of For those of you who don't know, they are like tons of millionaires that build software on Shopify that, yeah, maybe they won't be like, I don't know, a unicorn, the next but they IPO, will, but yeah. yeah, but they build like phenomenal businesses, extremely efficient, yeah. like businesses for life. I completely agree with you. Exactly. And so to your point, it's like, how do we just nurture this so that the ecosystem continues to grow in all these different ways so that people have like multiple optionality to create success exactly. for themselves, whatever that looks like. Right. Um, that's, that's incredible. I love the, I love the ambition and energy. Um, so on that note, since you're already kind of sharing it, like what advice do you have for entrepreneurs out there? Um, you know, what are some of the biggest learnings you, you wish you had early? Yeah. So, so first of all, like, uh, I don't think like I'm in the position yet to give advices. Like I always feel that like, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's just like my point of view and it's a, uh, in general, like, uh, like people should gather like a lot of information and decide themselves. I think eventually it's like, it's a long-term journey and really like, I know it's a cliche, but like for someone that's been going at it for 10 years and really now, like I actually think Yotpo has like another 20 years and like really now understanding the meaning 
of, you know, I didn't have kids when I started Yotpo. Now I have a family and they are such like a big part of like what it means. And just like going like long term and trying to optimize for long term. And it's it's freaking hard to optimize for long term because Takes you have expectations. Yeah, a lot of patience. Yeah. And you see that company that they, I don't know, on TechCrunch, they are growing so quickly and they're doing that well. And, and it's it, it, it bothers and you lost that candidate and you want to do that, but you don't have the budget. And it, it's hard. It really is yeah. hard. But, but eventually like compounding value it <clears throat> happens like over time. Um, so I just think like long term is something that, uh, you know, everyone is saying that. I think like I started to really appreciate that in the last like few years where I actually see like the, the value of going the long term and building yeah. like the company of your dream. So I, I think that's like something really, really big. The second one is like, don't take yourself too seriously. I think also like my, my perspective, like eventually, eventually, eventually remember that you know, this is life and you cannot control everything. Like you, there are things that are beyond our control. And, and I, I was saying, uh, you know, when, when COVID started uh, and everyone was uh, scared and when, when co and then there were like three months where everyone in e-commerce at least were starting to do really, really well. One of the, one of the parents on my kid's school uh, she texted everyone if we can, you know, donate her money because she's a travel agent and her business is completely ruined. And I remember our employees were like celebrating and I, I was keep telling everyone like, be super humble. Remember yeah. there's such like, and who knows that like, who could have tell that COVID will happen and it will be like a, a good thing if there's such a thing for like the Yotpo or e-commerce internal world. So because there are certain things that are like bigger than us that we cannot control. I can tell you now, like a lot of Yotpo employees keeps talking about like, what do you think, Tomer? Should we go quicker on SPAC? Should we rush towards an IPO? That's also like a lot of noise internally in Yotpo. But right. I always try like, we need to put energy on things that we can control and we cannot control the market. We, we, we can control Yotpo. And I think that's something that's uh, it's very hard to do because it, it requires a lot of discipline and a lot of like, yeah, I, I cannot control what, I don't know. I remember when, uh, when the market started to be crazy, we started getting so much, so many like SPAC offers. Uh, some right. of them are really, really good. Um, and, and, and people were asking, I was just like, the only thing we can do is optimize to when it's right for Yotpo to take the next stage of like becoming a public company, right? Mm -hmm. And when that's the right, and we cannot control, how, maybe the market is going to crash in six months. Who the hell knows? Yeah. And maybe it doesn't, maybe it's continued this way for the next two years, but we can't mm -hmm. optimize based on that. We can optimize based on what's for us. So I think the second learning is definitely like worry and put your energy on, on the stuff that you can control. And maybe the last thing that is also a cliche, but I can tell like, it's all about like winning is a team sport. It really, it, it does, it, it takes a village and, and the people that you bring and the people that you work with. And, and you know, as entrepreneurs, we have like, I always say that like, I have like the, the advantage. I can hire much more experienced people underneath me that are much better than I am in like so many different fronts. And I think we would have never, never, never gotten here without like the people that combine Yotpo. Uh, and there are certain people in Yotpo that, you know, has been with us for like 10 years and eight years and five years. And it's just like amazing to see like the, so I think winning is a team sport and don't, don't forget about the team. Yeah. I, I think, um, just, you know, in, in the way that you think about it, it's, it's so clearly a long game for you. Um, and like you, you know, you've shown so much like sort of patience and humbleness throughout the entire process. And it's, it's actually like, this isn't meant to be a knock, but it's kind of, you know, different than a lot of the Silicon Valley esque companies that are, that, you know, come out as startups and are sort of like looking for that, like two to five year exit strategy. Um, and it's like much more short-term focus, well, right? Has you, just, a joke. you just build a different company. There's a joke that we say, uh, you know, there's like a lot of books that founders don't scale. And what does it take for founders? So Omri's joke, when we read on like Silicon, or we talk with entrepreneurs that are very on the Silicon Valley cliche, we always, he says that, unfortunately, we are founders that scaled. So that's like the, <laughs> the, the, the internal joke that he uses, which I love. Um, I so love yes, it. definitely. 
all the listeners probably learned a ton today. So for everyone tuning in, um, join us again next week at Beyond the Build for more Founder Talks. And thank you, Tomer, again. Thank you very, very much for having me, Fatima. Like, I, A, I miss seeing you in person and I hope like uh, soon rather than later, soon. we can meet uh, <laughs> in person. And, uh, A New York you. City reunion. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. That's what we need. And in yeah. general, I have to say, you know, like I really think like Shopify has been such a huge part of what Yotpo is building and you guys are really like paving the way. Uh, and thank you. I think on the behalf of every Yotpo, Yotpo is really, really thankful. And for the entire ecosystem, by the way, if we can help for anyone and whatsoever, please feel free to reach out and thank you. 